Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of GWiz Weekends. I'm Emerald Fox. I'm Lynette Zhang. For those of you who are new to our channel and our show, each week I'm going to be pulling a social media post regarding the current economy and asking, as a novice, our expert, Lynette, um, <laughs> any questions or you know confusions I might have uh, and you know seeking her invaluable insights and any knowledge she can share with us. Because so, I am really trying to teach you everything I know and pass down this knowledge because we're always going to need it. History has a tendency to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. So you're doing a great Absolutely. job so far. <laughs> Thank you. Well, today's post is from Market Watch. It says homeowners who bought during the pandemic would pay 40% more for their house today. It says mm -hmm. those homeowners were lucky enough not to miss the low mortgage rate boat and they're now sitting in homes that they perhaps would not be able to afford at current rates. The latest mortgage monitor report from the data company Intercontinental Exchange suggests. Okay. Now, uh, my question is, how might an impending reset, the imp impending reset affect or impact the housing affordability and the broader economy, particularly in terms of purchasing power and the stability of the real estate market? Well, okay, let's talk about the stability of the real estate market first. And I got to go back earlier than the pandemic mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, you were talking about interest rates. Right. Well, it was the great financial crisis, I mean, th which is not over yet, but that was the start of zero interest rate policy, dropping interest rates all the way down so that the public, more people can, and corporations for sure, mm -hmm. can take on more and more debt and make it easier to service that debt. So that was how, um, you know, back then, central banks targeted real estate to reinflate, right? Because the the like the value I'll I'll talk about the value of of where I live my home okay. right because I bought this in 2010 right right at one point this was the most expensive house in the neighborhood when I bought it for its current value is about like a third and that was in 2010 so the real estate market tanked about I think about 45 percent wow. from the great financial crisis but since the central bankers target it for reflation and went to zero interest rate policy, you could afford more yes. house because the interest rates were lower. Right. So the, the value of the market value of the houses were already reinflated. Then we had the pandemic, right? right? And people said, oh, I can work from anywhere. And with what they did again with free money, which encouraged even more inflation in the real estate market. So the first thing to understand is that the real estate market was already vulnerable and the higher prices doesn't make it less vulnerable. And the problem really is, is that these homes are not affordable. And that has nothing to do with interest rates because they have inflated that value up so okay. high that even if the interest rates this next go around when they decide to drop them to zero, if the real estate prices have not corrected, who's going to be able to buy them? Right. Just a very few people. And, and I'm sorry, but most people your age are, you know, if they were, if they were in the, like you did, you bought it. When did you buy your house? 22. 22. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what interest rate? Five, 5%. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. 22, 5%. So that was when interest rates had already started moving up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Now interest rates are another 7%, mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm. that. So and the real estate market, I mean, there's so much that's going on with it and the ability for people to actually afford it, especially in the position where we are right now, where we are seeing more layoffs and we are especially seeing a lot more delinquencies. Right. Right. So that should push the value of the real estate down. But here's the opportunity, and this is what I want. You know, I really want everybody to know it, and especially the people that are out there going, I can't afford a house, I can't afford a house. Well, right now you have gold that is severely undervalued, right? 
somewhere two, three thousand bucks, something like mm-hmm. that, where, wherever it is in that vicinity. Right. But since I just did a training session for our new strategy specialists, yeah. so that made me recalculate the current fundamental value of an ounce of gold. And it was, now this is on a one-to-one basis. I'm not saying that's where we're going to go immediately. But if they reset, revalued the currency against an ounce of gold and they did it on a one-to-one basis, the true fundamental value of an ounce of gold is 41000 Here's the opportunity, right? Nope, you can't afford a house, but you can afford it. Uh, you can afford gold, mm-hmm. right? That's a lot less expensive. There are all different ways that you can position into gold with all different amounts of whatever you have to work with. Mm-hmm. But then it's going to flip flop. So the value, the how, the current market value of real estate is up here. Even in some right. places, I know it's come down. It's going to come down a whole lot more. The value of gold is down here. That's going to flip flop. So okay. for if you accumulate gold at this point, when that happens, what, and, and we have ways to calculate out how much gold you're going to need for this strategy, et cetera, you're going to be able to take a little bit of gold and then convert exactly. in that real estate when that flip flop occurs. Right. So for all of you out there that have lost hope of this, regain it because this is simply history repeating itself. And on average, 25 ounces of gold, like in Germany, could buy an entire city block, buildings and all. And I've done pieces, I actually recently did a piece on what happens to real estate and gold during these transitions. Mm -hmm. So understand, because of all of that inflation and reflation that the central banks have manipulated. So pushing all these prices up, not just of houses, but of everything, everything, right? right? Everything is overvalued. Is it the value of the house going up or is it the value of the currency, the fiat currency going Going down? down and the manipulation with interest rates that make it appear that you're doing better. But it also is disheartening for the younger generation, or not just the younger generation, Any, anybody. Anybody rent, renting, trying to become a homeowner, homeowners trying to get investment properties. I mean, it's it goes the list goes on. Everyone's always going to need a home, even renting. I mean, renting also goes up. I mean, there's lots of different things that you would need to convert that gold into, and there's your opportunity, like you, like you said. Exactly. And, and that is the whole piece that, that people really need to understand. So they see the spot market going up to 2,300 or 3,000 or 10,000 or whatever. Right. And they're like, oh my Everyone's God, like, gold wow. is really high, right? <laughs> right? It's not. It's severely undervalued even at those levels because the higher the debt goes, the higher that the value of gold goes. What that cover ratio is, in other words, when they have to reset the currency, at what level are they going to do it? Nobody's going to know know that. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not going to know that until it actually happens. happens, Right. However, what we do know a hundred percent is that gold and silver are severely undervalued and you always want the lion's share of your, at least I always want this. You might not, but (laughs) I do. I always want the lion's share of my wealth, so most of my wealth, in an undervalued asset that is in a long-term positive trend, and the least amount of my wealth in an overvalued instrument that is in a long-term negative trend. And it is so simple to know whether that trend is positive or negative, and it's, it's just like this. Look at a long-term graph. They want you to look short-term, 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 so you can't see the truth. I'm telling you, step back so you can see the truth. And you know you're in a positive trend when you see a series of higher and higher lows. Because if you keep getting higher lows, you're going to get higher highs. I mean, it's just that simple. I can't give you a lot of guarantees, but that's one that I can give you. Wow. Now you might say to me, well, look at cryptocurrencies, Mm -hmm. right? Or look at the stock market. And those are going up, Mm -hmm. except 
that that's not the real trend. You have to look at the purchasing power. Right, which is gone. Which is, it, it's still there. It's You've at, got 30 like cents. From, from a buck to three cents, mm. but it's only being held together by confidence, right? Right. And, and so that's the real trend to pay attention. If you can only convert that asset or that instrument into fiat dollars, wherever they are in the world, can be dollars, can be euros, can be yen, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. If you can only convert that into the government-based, debt-based money, 10 trillion times zero is still zero, right? I have a hundred trillion dollars Zimbabwe note. What can you buy with it? Nothing. It really is that simple. So if you take your, your wealth that you have, your disposable wealth, what you can put into gold and silver that you hold in your possession. Because if you don't hold it, you don't yeah. own it, regardless of your perception. But if you do that, then this opportunity in overvalued real estate, overvalued stocks that are going to survive this, some will, <laughs> there's a lot of zombies that won't, mm. but some will, then you actually have wealth that you can put into those other assets. Right. And the American dream can be alive and well. You wow. just have to understand these patterns. That's why we're doing this. Right. 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 Because I want people your age, younger, older, I want everybody to create a strategy for themselves that puts them in the best possible position to not just weather this, strong, this storm, <laughs> but to have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Not rocket science. It's actually pretty simple. Yeah. Wow. Well, I really appreciate that. I know, you know, we've talked about real estate previously, but this mm -hmm. was just a little bit different. And I think that talking about the strategy yesterday, I mean, it definitely goes into part of how people can, you know, reach out to us and, you know, using well, your strategy that you right. created for yourself, mm -hmm. we can provide that for people and that service. So exactly. Absolutely. And I, I think people don't, didn't quite get because they weren't at the strategy training center. Session, right. but we are getting ready to open our doors to everybody we want to share that with you exactly mm -hmm. and so we have uh, we have strategy specialists that we are working hard on training now you've already been doing that for the mm -hmm. last three years so you understand the strategy right you want to tell everybody what you told me when we sat down here yeah I haven't and, been paying right. attention to the strategy at all we've been focused on you know operations and getting things up and running and you know youtubing and and learning a lot about that too of course but um, I've missed the strategy and I didn't realize how much how invested I was in it and working with for Previous clients and helping them get set up. I mean, there's nothing better than knowing that you're helping someone oh, and you helping them well understand what they can do best for themselves. Whether they even, you know, went through with, uh, you know, a sales order or something. It's really just t telling them about their money and the things that they have and that the things that they can do if they exactly. get protected. So, and we really are going to share this strategy mm -hmm. with everybody, mm -hmm. right? Because we really want everybody across the whole world to be able to get into a possession to a position where they can not just weather this storm, but we, but that you got to have that foundation, right? You know, you have to be able to sustain a reasonable standard of living, but to get into a position to take care, to take advantage of what we can't get out of the way of, right? Right. This is how you have wealth transfer, but how about we have it transfer our way it, okay. instead of it always being going to the 1%. Absolutely. Right. I mean, that just it's our turn, you know, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So yeah, that was nice to hear because we haven't really even, yeah. we've been too busy to really talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I had a blast yes. training and going over that and going more incredible. deeply in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'll be seeing snippets of this, right? Adam? It's very inspiring. You, you'll have to tune in once we, once we get that released. Absolutely. Patience, patience, but we're almost there. Yep. 
moving forward talking about our wonderful viewers i do have a question as mm -hmm. always from karen today she says hello lynette's team i would like to inquire as to what you suggest for precious metals holders to have in place to handle their metals cotton gloves what else oh. during the end game how will we check for authenticity of precious ah, metals that's great is there a specific scale needed for precious metals i would love to have this topic covered with much appreciation karen uh actually that would be um how do you know that will be a video if we write this down and you remind me please mm -hmm. okay i will do a video on that but one very easy way no you don't have to hold them with uh with gloves because anything that is raw in other words just the coin itself has more than likely unless you find a shoe box mm -hmm. somewhere or a, you know coffee can anything, buried right right um it has been in circulation right so it's raw it's just the coin and you can hold it in your hand that's fine if it's slabbed in other words in that hard tamper proof case mm -hmm. then don't try and open it because if you do we would have to re slab it right and so in that case you can hold that too because you're just holding the case you're not actually holding the physical coin mm -hmm. simply put though go out and get yourself a really strong magnet because gold and silver are not magnetic mm -hmm. so if you're looking at a coin someplace then just test it right i mean that's a that's a really simple test but i will do a video great on because we haven't even purchased that equipment yet mm -hmm. so we'll be purchasing that equipment and i will show you everything and it's not very expensive but the really easy one is just to keep a keep a magnet in your purse awesome. or your you know in your pocket that makes it simple mm -hmm. That's also the point of working with a reputable dealer mm. and not just going online and, you know, because Walmart and Costco and Amazon, mm -hmm. how do you know that this is real? Um, we only work with Mint Direct dealers and wholesalers. Right. And so they guarantee the authenticity. So from us, everything is guaranteed. So I'm sorry, because I no, didn't say absolutely. that. But if you're out and about, you can keep a magnet with you. Right. Right. I mean, that's in a your really purse, your pocket, what have you. If you mm -hmm. know you're going to be looking, you know, if you're going to or your local dealer, or, yeah, we're yeah, going to give you our number soon. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned for that. Okay, everyone, that's it for today's G Wiz weekends. If you like this episode, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Always share, 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 and hit that subscribe button and the bell to make sure you get notifications. Stay tuned. We've got another awesome video for you right down here, so please make sure to click on that, and we'll see you next weekend. But until then, stay safe out there. Bye. Bye now.